Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another exploration. And this is the second of my videos looking at Abingdon on Thames. And today I'm very excited because I'm joined by Tim Miller, who is the curator of Abingdon Abbey. Hello, Tim. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me and, and in fact, inviting me up to Abingdon to have a look at your wonderful abbey. And we are actually standing at one of the altars in the abbey. And the thing is though, Tim, I can't see any of the walls or the roof or any of the building. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Oh, the Abingdon Abbey was taken down in the dissolution of 1538. Right, so it's not here, but we are standing on the site of yes. the abbey uh, in what is now a, a beautiful park with, I have to say, a lovely collection of trees um, that are going through the autumn colours, which is rather nice. A statue of Her Majesty uh, Queen Victoria. Yes. That was uh, in the town centre. Yes. <laughs> He's taking his hat off. <laughs> hey, I can't do that. Um, um, I haven't got a hat. <laughs> yes. So it was taken from the town centre and then moved here. That's correct. Um, but this was the site of a colossal abbey church the main church and and then all the other buildings that are associated with it yes um, and just to, to sort of there are some buildings extant which it, you are the creator of and we're going to have a look at those shortly but we thought we'd start here just really to give you an idea of the space of the place so we're standing on there's a there's two altars that's correct so this altar it would have been, what do you think? The first one for yeah. the, the lower end of the church. Right. On the west end. Yeah, the west being that way, mm -hmm. I guess. Behind us. And then the east end would have been in front. So it was a big church with two transepts. That's correct. And um, it must have been very impressive. Yes, actually called St. Mary's uh, Church of the Abingdon Abbey. Right. About 429 feet east and west. Gosh. And... 210 I think because I saw you pacing them out yes to, all around is the uh, the footprint uh, or the uh, the exterior uh, on the foundations that have, they have found so we know this is true yes and they've marked it out in with brick um, markings just so you get an idea of how big the church is yeah and that's based on a 1920s uh, archaeological excavation which uh, gives us very accurate uh, placement of those foundations right including w where the altars and, and what have you are mm. so it's I mean it's incredible but now the Abingdon was the Saxons were here wasn't it, it goes right back to mm -hmm. the early days in mm. fact I think I read there's there were Neolithic settlements as well before the Saxons but it's the Saxons that started Abingdon Abbey yeah in uh, 675 uh, there are sketchy records but uh, land was donated for uh, a house of, or a place of prayer in that year uh, to a nephew of a king and uh, we think that's the beginning of the Abingdon Abbey. We're going to take a walk down to the the, the, the second altar and just see how, dis how big it is and we'll carry on the story of Abingdon Abbey from there. Right well so this is the the east altar Point. And we know that because they very kindly mm. put a, a mark on the ground with a with a cross, which is superb. And behind us, just over here, would have been we can see from the footings, the uh, where the east w window would have been, uh, presumably a beautiful big east window. Mm. And then you've got the transepts either side of us. Yes. So uh, a remarkable church. But of course, it, it's not here, and we'll find out why that is. But before we do that, let's just go back to the, those Saxons. Mm. So what was that like? Uh, it was very primitive then. They, they talk about 12 monks they started with, and uh, they lived in huts, whatever huts mean. Yeah. We can only assume maybe sticks and straw and, yeah, and uh, like clay. The, maybe like the round huts and the sort of thing. It's that, possible, yeah. With their, with their church. And we know the Saxons weren't really into building with stone, they were building with wood. Yeah. Because so few Sax Saxon uh, masonry churches survive. Um, and, but before we even get up to the Normans, something else happened. Yes, in the ninth century, uh, the Danes 
as a lot of people will know, came to visit this island and uh, they went across the land uh, burning, stealing, and they came to Abingdon and they burned the Abingdon Abbey. Gosh. So this is the Thames? This is the Thames. Fantastic. And Abingdon, it, as the name suggests, Abingdon on Thames. Mm -hmm. um, and so this would have been the main way of bringing, you know, your stone in to the Abbey. Mm. Your goods could come and go from the Abbey on, on the Thames, the, the great famous Thames. Yes. And presumably those Danes, <laughs> those mm -hmm. Vikings would have come up the Thames to raise uh, to the ground and burn and pillage and all the things they did mm. the the saxon settlement exactly so the river is both a blessing and a curse yeah because supplies come and go um the river does so many things for you and yet the danes use it as a highway yes for invasion yes indeed now i think you were telling me that the thames also was a border line it was at one time between uh, wessex to the south and mercia to the north and uh, one explanation for the founding of the abbey was maybe to stake the claim of Wessex uh, on the north side of the Thames. Oh, I see. So they'd cross the boundary, as it were. Mm, yes, and right. said, this belongs to us. Right. Look at those cheeky monks. <laughs> <laughs> the abbey had to be built up again after the Danes came. Correct. And we go into the medieval period. Um, and, of course, we know about the dissolution of the monasteries where Henry VIII and his uh, right-hand man Cromwell uh, decided that, you know, he was going to close them down, get the money, sell off the land, um, pension off some of the monks, some of the others. A, a few others, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so we're going to have a look at, have a look at that and, and carry on with the story of the Abbey and how it grew and what happened to it. Here is what most people think are the ruins of the abbey. Some people think these are abbey ruins, yes. But actually, it's a complete lie, isn't it? <laughs> this is a 1920s uh, folly built by Mr. Trindle. 1920s folly, yeah. And, and actually, when you look at it, I mean, it may be that it's part of uh, the masonry from the final abbey. That's true. If you look at the stone, he may well have used Abbey stone. Yeah. Uh, but the construction it's, is uh, within the last 100 years. Yeah. And then the thing is, since you've paced out, as we saw, the size and the scale of the Abbey, mm. to think that, as some people mistakenly think, these are the, the re remaining ruins, that the Abbey was this big, it's preposterous, isn't it? It, it is. The, yeah. the abbey was so much larger than yeah. these ruins. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and taller and scalier and grander and, and, and everything. But if nothing else, though, the fact that it might, you know, people probably walk around the ground and not really realise. Mm. If this just reminds people, oh, there was once an abbey here. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's doing a, a good service. But, yeah, there's weird anomalies like this here, a bit of trim around the window that's just stuck into mm. there which you know and as soon as you look at that you go well that's not right no that shouldn't be there <laughs> exactly amazing just to give you an idea of the actual scale of this church tim is right down the far end he is a tiny speck that is the west entrance i'm still at the altar and there's still a little bit that way but we can't see him <laughs> it's amazing this is a, a magnificent view, Tim. We're looking down on the mill stream, and it's absolutely brilliant. Where are we? We're on the Kozner's Bridge uh, over the mill stream, which was constructed by the monks to run their uh, grinding mill. Right. So how, there's a story to the construction of this particular mill stream as, uh, as to why it's here, isn't it? Yes, uh, after the Danes and their destruction, uh, when the abbey was restarted, they needed to be self-sustaining. And so uh, the monks uh, endeavored to build this stream to power uh, four grinding wheels in, right, four. in their meal. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so using some pre-existing ditches that were around Abingdon before the Danish 
destruction. They extended one of those ditches and it comes now under this bridge uh, moving the water along parallel to the Thames uh, for the meal. Right. And this area here, we see this rather beautiful stone building here, which is, I think, more modern than the Abbey times. Right. But may well have been built using some of the stone, because, I mean, so much of that Abbey building that eventually went with the dissolution was used for other things. Correct. But this was what, the stable area? Um, it's called the stables today, and uh, so that sort of evokes uh, a memory of the possibility that the Abbey stables could have been located in this area. Right, yes. And then the fulling mill, um, a little further down... Mm -hmm. ...was the next there. building and was connected to uh, the existing or uh, surviving Abbey buildings, uh, but the, the fulling mill's been uh, torn down. A long time ago. Yeah. And the fulling mill is associated with wool, of mm. course, and wool being a very important thing um, for the in the med medieval period, um, and the textiles, um, the, the uh, weaving industry in Abingdon mm -hmm. and, and Oxfordshire. Going back to the Thames, the, the meadows there, they were again for pasture. Uh, yes, and, um, because the Abbey owned all the land on both sides of the river. And uh, so this side was used for growing vegetables, uh, carrots and cabbages and the things that they would have eaten. Yeah. And then uh, animals were being pastured on the other side, sheep and cattle and those large animals. Right. Oh, yeah. So th the mills over there, we've got the stables over here. We're slowly getting down to the existing buildings that actually do survive from the Abbey. Mm -hmm. The Abbey carried on um, until the Tudor period. Henry VIII came along. It, it, at some point it must have been at its most grandest, but by the Tudor times and by, 16, um, by 1538, was mm -hmm. it? That's correct. A lot of the uh, religious buildings were being run down and closed up by Henry VIII. Correct. And that magnificent building, once again, was raised to the ground. Yes. Not so much demolished, but just deconstructed because all the material was repurposed and uh, sold off to uh, people who would buy building materials for walls and houses and all yes. kinds of things. Yes. So the stones are everywhere. Well, we're coming to the end of this video, but in the next video, we're going to find out exactly what's left, how important it is, what it's used for, and why an American is the curator <laughs> of something very, very English, which will be interesting. Yes. So far though, Tim, thank you so much for taking me round and explaining the Abbey and showing me the grounds. Join us next time, and we're going to have a look at the Long Gallery. You have the Echeca and the, the Unicorn Theatre. And the Unicorn Theatre. So join us for that. In the meantime, don't forget to follow, like and subscribe, become a patron, support what we do. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one. Till then, thank you so much, Tim. Our pleasure. Bye for now.